What's up? My name is Ken Dumbo, the MC with the sauce. Don't forget to subscribe to Jeku. information to the customers within Zambia and also other stakeholders who may be beyond our borders through you, the media. So this is a press briefing by the managing director, Zesco. I think you may have to move slightly. So that Engineer Victor Benjamin Mapani. So, without wasting time, we'll go straight into the press briefing by the Managing Director, Zesco Limited. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Caristo. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, I think as we indicated from the very beginning that we will be interacting with yourselves and sharing information directly with yourselves so that uh, we keep you and indeed the nation abreast on the activities happening in the National Power Utility, in whose interests almost all the 20 million Zambians have. As you are aware, we now announce the power deficit and the mitigation measures, which we now stand on. Uh, you also heard that there was a declaration of a disaster on the hydrology in the country. The energy sector is not exempt of that. And our idea is to start implementing these mitigation measures by the 11th of March 2024. The idea is to start early so that we do not have prolonged outages or indeed prolonged painful measures ahead. This decision comes carefully considered after looking at the water levels both on the Zambezi Basin and the Kafiwe Basin, which are the two main Anka rivers where our power generation is habitat. The power balance overview. Zesco's electric generation is predominantly hydro. And in Zambia, we sit at about 87% of hydropower generation all the other forms of energy form the difference, which is 13%. So you understand that when there is an impact of deficit on the hydrology, or indeed on the hydro, would definitely be affected severely. The influence of El Nino climate phenomena on the 2023-2024 rainfall season has had a negative effect on the entire water flows and indeed associated generation capacity. Zambia has an installed capacity of 3,600 megawatts. This is, and 87% of this is all hydro. The rest are heavy fuel, solar, and thermal. On the updates for the Kariba, Lake Kariba is a shared resource between Zambia and Zimbabwe and the Zimbabwean power utilities. 
ZRIA, which is Zambezi River Authority, ZRIA Water, annually allocates water to both SESCO and the Zimbabwean Power Company. The allocations depend on the amount of water which is collected or indeed which filters into that specific lake. The allocations, once done, are then executed by the power utilities, transformed into energy, and that power is sent to our customers. Due to the Onino effects in 2024, the combined allocations for the two power utilities only limited to 16 billion cubic meters, compared to 30 billion cubic meters 2023, compared to 40 billion cubic meters in 2022. So you see that we have been declining. In 2022, we had 40 billion total allocation for both utilities, which means Zambia had 20 billion and Zimbabwe had 20 billion. In 2023, the allocation was 30 billion, meaning each utility only utilized 15 billion cubic meters of water. 2024, however, the total allocation for the two utilities is 16 billion, meaning we only have 8 billion. If you look at 8 billion to 20 billion, it's almost one third. And that's how difficult this situation is today. And the specific details of what we want to do now is to ensure that we put in mitigation measures against this. One of them would definitely be load shedding. The frequency, place, and specific timing of the power outages in different areas of the country will be communicated through weekly schedules. Initially weekly schedules and maybe bi-weekly after that once we stabilize. These schedules will be made available on Zesco's official website. They'll be available in the print media. They'll be available also on social media. And the reasons why we do this are as follows. Zambia is experiencing a critical situation due to below average rainfall the lowest we have ever experienced in 20 years, leading to significantly lower water levels in water reservoirs for hydropower generation. As a result of the poor 2023-2024 hydrological season, the current available average generation for Kariba complex specifically will be sitting around 214 megawatts. 214 megawatts against an installed capacity of 1,080 megawatts gives you approximately only one-fifth or 20 percent of that capacity. That's what we shall be able to use. The total installed uh, capacity, 3,600. Total demand currently, 2,300 average. And with the variable power now, we'll only be able to generate 1,600. The difference, therefore, between what is available and what the demand is, is 700. And that is what is declared as a deficit. We have other mitigating measures on the 700 megawatt shortfall. Um, we are going to have to look out for imports from our neighbors who may have something extra. But because this region is all impacted by almost the same El Nino effect, we couldn't get too much. We've been importing power from Mozambique, 50 megawatts firm power off peak for the last eight months and that should continue up to July when the year elapses. Beyond that we have negotiated another extra 40 megawatts from them to just reduce the deficit by an average of 43 megawatts because we are importing power off peak. It is not 24 7. It's cheaper to import power off peak which is a longer time but when you do the averaging that just comes to 43 megawatts. So the 90 megawatts that will start flowing from Mozambique will average only 43 megawatts from a deficit of 700, giving you a difference of 700 minus 43, so you have 647 or 657. Another measure that we take on this aspect is to claw back on exports, on all our bilateral agreements, to leave only life-saving supplies to the material countries. Uh, we have actually already started engaging our neighbors whom we are exporting power to to ensure that uh, we claw back what we can in this difficult time. We are also going to engage all the high power users, the mines in their category, and other 
power user consumers to reduce the power usage on their contribution to the load management. Promoting energy conservation practices is one aspect that we shall embark on seriously to help reduce this demand. There are several things that can be done there, uh, including using energy efficient appliances, switching off power when you don't need it, and also we encourage citizens to start using gas for cooking. Zambia is the only country in this region where actually people take pride to cook with electricity. But other countries, our neighbors like Botswana, gas is the main cooking energy source. You go into Zimbabwe, it's almost the same thing. You go into Malawi, that is climbing. So we also encourage our customers to start using gas for cooking. Water heating as well, we can use solar. And now we have more efficient solar elements, solar appliances, which can actually heat your water to the same temperatures as you use electricity. What's up? My name is Ken Dumbo, the MC with the sauce. Don't forget to subscribe to JKU. We further believe that once these measures are taken, there will be definitely some relief on the 700 megawatt deficit. Exploring various options for increasing power generation incentives are definitely on the way. If you're not, from 2022 into 2023, we signed off quite a lot of independent power producer investor alignments to ensure that we do get uh, more renewables injected onto the grid, specifically solar. We also explore the use, the, the, more, the development of uh, hydropower in areas where the rains are more, especially on the northern part. We do have there one studied site to give us at least 240 megawatts. All things being equal, we believe that that project should be able to be commenced this year. But hydropower generation development takes much longer times so we'll be looking at only a fast stretch of not less than four years to get that done but the solar power plants are quicker to install and also quicker to get results on but as you know solar power is not firm power solar power will only give you power when the sun is up and the diffused sunlight is available so basically you can calculate say approximately 25 percent of the day that's when you get that solar power but we do believe if we have more of such, we will be able to have this relief in future. We've also opened up the solar power and indeed power generation uh, portfolio that up to 5,000 megawatts, any Zambian who has the capacity to develop a plant from 100 kilowatts up to 5,000 kilowatts, you can actually develop that plant and then all we have between yourselves and, and us is to sign off a connection agreement, agree on a tariff, a very simplistic tariff, because it falls in the retail bracket of up to 5,000 megawatts. So you can actually put up a plant, 100 kilowatts, 200 kilowatts, all the way up to 5,000 kilowatts on your farm, on your small holding. Zesco will be able to uptake that power, and we believe this is the way to go. There has been a lockdown on this, I think, from the previous uh, arrangements, but now we've managed to negotiate with ERB that this is an avenue which we should exploit and ensure that uh, many citizens can actually start trading in power. Trading in power is not very common in Zambia. Very, very few people actually are involved in power trading. A 100 kilowatt will cost you about $100,000. Maybe now it will cost you just about $80,000 80, or $90,000. And we've been talking to the banks to start encouraging SMEs, people who would like to go into the power production arena, to actually get these soft loans, quick loans, to be able to invest in power production on solar, small hydros, indeed even wind, and also geothermal. Zesco is taking these steps to combat also vandalism and thefts, because we do know that when there is power disruption, more vandalism occurs. But also, even before power is disrupted, there's been a lot of vandalism of late. You may have followed through on media how some of the companies well established have actually been involved in literally sabotaging and collecting copper from transformers, from cables, and selling them out at basically very low costs, very low prices. This is something that we are trying to follow through with the Ministry of Home Affairs to try and ensure that we do get an SI to get vandalism on critical installation to be an unbearable offense, sit in that realm so that at least this 
carnage can stop. It is regrettable that Tesco will lose approximately $35 million a month from this. $700 million interprets to about 700 megawatts interprets to $35 million loss a month. So Cisco also actually will lose out big time in this activity. Cisco understands the adversities and challenges the load shedding will cause and we sincerely regret this and we wish things were different but that's where we are. There is very little that we can do about the shortage of water. We have to mitigate so that we do not have a worst case situation down the year. The corporation is committed to working diligently to address the current challenges and restore normalcy to the power supply as soon as we get in more and more water flows. I thank you all. Thank you, MD. Um, very elaborate. It's a press briefing. We are going to allow a few questions. I know you need to dash off and um, process uh, stories. I will allow a few questions. Your name and the organization you represent, then your question is um, the, the lady now. Uh, Good afternoon. I'd like to find out how many, I know you said the shed is in the basement, but are you able to just state how many hours approximately this was shedding will be happening? Thank you. Maybe we take another two. Um, and this one question for media house, please. I, I understand. I know that there's quite a lot here, so to give chance to everybody. Next question, please. Yes. Your name, the media house you represent, and your question. Taonda from Bloomberg. Um, MD asked me to find out with regards to the large uh, energy users you mentioned uh, engaging with the mines. Um, I wanted to find out uh, by what percentage are you looking at in terms of cutting back? Um, either percentage or uh, megawatts are you looking at in terms of uh, scaling back on the mines? Okay, let's have question three, please. Thank you, Barry. Good afternoon, Mr. My name is Jeff. I wanted to find out how much this was generated from power trading. Uh, thank you very much. The first one was the length of um, outages. Um, what you do is you check what would be the best frequency in terms of outages. Our plan is to have a three-tier schedule, meaning three into 24 is eight hours. And eight hours gives you a reasonable time to plan so you remain with 16 hours of power and most production companies 16 hours is quite a good time for them to do to be productive if we start switching off two hours later on again after 16 hours which another two hours is very disruptive but an eight hour stretch is good for someone to plan especially for the production houses and so we target to do eight hours per area per day the second item from Taonga, the mines, how much do are we anticipating? We are actually engaging the mines on Thursday come next week, all things being equal. And our idea is to crawl back not less than 250 megawatts. But we believe that between 200 and 250 megawatts from all the mining houses, both supplied by Zesco and those supplied by other utilities. So a total of 250 megawatts, which will be approximately 20-25% of what they actually consume. This is going to help us if we have a 700 deficit, we take our 250, brings us to 450, which means everybody else will share the 450 megawatts. And then we also do have, by the way, the non-priority customers, customers who've decided that they will have non-priority power of supply, who have the, who therefore pay very, very little, even less than domestic rates. For those, we have indicated that we just provide them 50% of the power that they need for production. So that's how we sit on what we are likely to pull back on the mines. And then, of course, how much has Zesco generated from power trading? I can actually give you a complete portfolio so that you have a clear view. Zesco sends out power 27% of the power 
out of that, Zesco gets 40% of the revenue. That gives you an idea of how much exports help run this organization. And of those, you are just talking about eight or nine trading lines. Eight or nine trading lines give you 40% of the revenue. We have 1.3 million customers who are domestic, providing about only 32 to 33% of the revenue. And then uh, that includes the small industries. And then the mine sector provides the difference. So that's basically where we sit on that. That's why we cannot cut off exports completely. They actually supplement and give ZESCO the boost to be able to run the institution. What's up? My name is Ken Dumbo, the MC with the sauce. Don't forget to subscribe to JQ. Thank you, uh, the last three. Africa Energy. Yes. Um, I just want clarification because the last, the last press briefing has indicated that the, the deal with Mozambique was scaled up to 200 megawatts. I'm not mistaken, but you said we're limited to 90. And beyond Mozambique, is there any other source you're looking at in case the West can be arrested? Thank you. Uh, that's one. Uh, we have the second one, please. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Boston from KPN TV. Uh, mine is just um, to seek clarification of when the list of schedule. Okay. Number three. Okay. Looks. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good, 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 good. Would be My better. Is, <laughs> could be better. Mm. Yes. My name is Mishek. Mishek Nirongo. I'd love to ask from which from business house? The media house? Central Voice TV. Central Voice TV. Yeah. Go ahead. They say that Zambia has the largest water bodies in Southern Africa. And here we are now. We are having 700. Uh, water deficit. What's the correlation there? Um, are you telling us that ZESCO hasn't had a backup plan for hydro generation? Because what's the correlation? We have the largest water bodies in the world of Southern Africa, <coughs> and here we are. We're having this crisis to say, didn't you have a backup plan for hydro generation since we have <coughs> the largest water bodies in the world of Southern Africa? <laughs> Okay. Africa Energy, um, we negotiated a deal with the Mozambique uh, to upscale the minimum imports um, to 90 from 50 megawatts off peak. Actually, even previously, what we had was 50 megawatts off peak firm and non firm power zero to 200 megawatts. That's what we had. So that's what is running now. What we've negotiated further is to increase the non firm off peak power to 90 megawatts minimum. That can go up to 200 megawatts when it's available. So we can actually import between 90 and 200 megawatts. They will have to give us schedules as well. That's why we have to have weekly schedules. When they provide us a weekly schedule, we can immediately see how much mitigation is there and how many hours we can either reduce or how much areas we can actually cut off. So it is from 90 megawatts to 200 megawatts of peak firm power. And yet the non firm will continue from zero to 200 megawatts. Uh, Central TV, Zambia has the largest water bodies. Yes, it has 70% of the water bodies in Sadiq City in, in, in Zambia. And that's why we are uh, exploiting it to 87% of the power generation. Uh, that's why it is sitting where it is. And also, we are almost the last hit now, because Zimbabwe has been load shedding for the last two, three years. South Africa has been load shedding for, you can tell the story, it's, it's a lot longer than that. Botswana and Namibia, you can't even compare. So we have exploited our water bodies. The alternative is to diversify dependence from hydro into other avenues. So the water will still not help us. Even if we put in more installed capacity, for example, there is a plan to put up 
power plant on the Zambezi again uh, called Batoka Gorge. So even if you put power there, you may gain a few megawatts of power, but when there's no water, it will still be a white elephant. Our idea is actually to move hydropower generation now from the southern part of the country to the north where the waters are better placed. So, and also to diversify uh, power generation, solar, geothermal, and even wind. And some sites have been already identified where this is going to take place. So yes, the water bodies are there, but if the water bodies are empty, then you have no power. So even if you have more of the water bodies, when they go down like what has happened now, you're talking about 200 megawatts we can extract from the Kariba complex instead of 1,000. The installed capacity there is 1,080. It was because of the big water bodies, that's why 1,080 was actually installed there. Um, can, can KBN TV, um, when are we supposed to start? The earlier we start, the better, then the less the pain. And so we plan to start on the 11th of March, which is basically next Monday. So the schedule should be coming out by Saturday or Sunday, if I'm not mistaken so that people can actually know how that week will look like. So weekly schedules to ensure that you plan your week. And the way we've put it up is to ensure that if you are going off in the morning for eight hours, the following week you don't go off in the morning, you go off another time. So this is one thing that we still have to engage with some customers to see if they want to have continuously just in the morning or continuously in the afternoon to evening or continuously at night or share and say if i'm off this week in the morning then next week i'll be in the afternoon the next week i'll be in the night so that we have a cycle for everybody to have the maximum utilization of the time in this shared time so basically that's why i want a three-tier kind of arrangement i think that has answers the last three questions um because the swimmers there tomorrow, I will yes. allow one question from a lady. You can, you can take two from the ladies. Yeah, from the ladies. Yes. Yes. Ladies. Two questions, and there's allowed from the ladies. I know we have lady, uh, female recorders. I see some men are talking to the ladies. Please stop, stop talking to yeah. the ladies. No? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sis, so, sis, there's none. What did you say? Um, what was that one to find out? I wanted to find out, uh, and do you remember there was that project we were following up with the Congo Diara on the sharing of the, the river so that uh, we can generate about a thousand megawatts. Uh, the last time we, we heard it was the, there was a feasibility. I don't know how far that situation is going. He has represented all the ladies, so. <laughs> <laughs> On that uh, Luapula River, we do have a portfolio uh, pre-feasibility close to 739 megawatts, different pointers. Um, so you're right when you say about 1,000. So 739 megawatts. What is needed there is to have now a vehicle to be able to drive the projects on that river. The Zambian government has signed an intergovernmental memorandum of understanding between the two countries, so that has been done. Also, the inter-utility memorandum of understanding has been signed. What remains now is formulation of the Luapula River Authority, which entity is going to manage the water resource on the Luapula River. And that's where we hope that we can now follow through to actually put up development of power plants there. You cannot develop on your side alone. It has to be double because you can't build half a dam. You have to build a dam across from your country to the other side. So the two countries must be in tandem, must be agreeable on whatever product is there. There has been some progress in that uh, now I see that there's a bridge being constructed around about that area. So I hope that very soon the Rapula River Authority or indeed another vehicle will be established so that these developments can start. It will benefit both the Congo, DR and Zambia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, on that note, we come to the end of this uh, presentation. Um, we'd like to thank you once again, the media, as you always say. If the tree falls and the media is not there, maybe the tree hasn't fallen because people don't know about it. We rely on you to report effectively and accurately, especially 
on matters such as this we cannot afford not to have accurate information. So we are very confident that through you, our people will get the actual message and the true message and the correct message of what this contest to do and why we are doing this. So once again, MD, thank you. CLT, thank you very much. And to the women, once again. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, J Cool, and turn on the notification bell, cause I'm gonna see you in the next video.